This one is everything you wanted to be. The best pre for one deal in the galaxy. The DC-17 interchangeable weapon system. Under your direction, use your support commands to get results. Target down. Eliminate target. Eliminate target. What makes it so unique? And why isn't it mass produced? Let's find an answer to these questions right now. This lesser known weapon was developed during the early stages of the Clone Wars by Blastek Industries, the manufacturer behind the DC-15. But unlike the mass-produced 15, this blaster was never meant to be on the front. It was meant to cause mayhem behind it. Away from GAR supply lines, the 17M was engineered to hold its own in a wide range of operations and perform multiple combat roles. From automatic fire to long-range accuracy and anti-tank capabilities, this weapon was by far one of the most modular platforms out there. And this modularity came at the price of 45,000 credits per unit. But what is it all about? When I said it's modular, I meant it. This platform also goes by the name of the DC-15M Interchangeable Weapon System, or ICWS for short. And that's because it can switch between three main configurations based on battlefield necessity and personal preference. Blaster configuration, sniper configuration, and an anti-armor grenade launcher configuration. One can switch between these configs by attaching the respective module on the empty stock of the weapon, which, at its root, is just the foundation. An airfield without planes. Rather useless, if you ask me. So, let's take a closer look. The first major one is the blaster rifle setup. The most commonly used one, really. Once the attachment and magazine are fixed to the stock, the DC-17M becomes an ion pulse assault rifle. This type of weapon fires ionized particles that disrupt electronic systems, making them effective against droids. That said, ion weapons will still remain lethal to organics while also allowing a stun mode. An important note to remember is that the DC-17M cools differently than platforms such as the DC-15. Instead of standard air cooling, the 17M uses coolant gas magazines, which are inserted on the left side of the weapon. In the blaster configuration, a single coolant magazine allows the user to fire roughly 60 shots before reloading is needed. But, or when distance decides to fight, you get the sniper configuration. When fixed to the stock, the 17M converts into a long-range semi-automatic ion pulse sniper rifle. This config uses an electromagnetic scope, which is adjustable between 10 times and 20 times magnification. Having a scope like this comes with a big perk, and that perk is durability. An electromagnetic scope won't crack like a glass lens or be knocked out of alignment, and that's one less reason for maintenance. Similar to the blaster config, this one too has a magazine that has to be reloaded after a certain amount of shots, but there is a catch. The raw power of this module overtakes the blaster counterpart, and it is also more accurate. Because of these reasons, it comes with different energy demands. As such, the coolant magazine used in the blaster setup is incompatible with the sniper configuration. The sniper requires a specialized magazine that allows 5 shots before reloading. Way less than the blaster, but at the end of the day, this module is all about precision and not suppression. 5 chances and little room to miss. The final major configuration is the anti-armor grenade launcher. This setup lets the operator dump fire heavy grenades with high penetration and a wide blast radius, making them effective against armored targets, enemy formations or hardened positions. Although not specifically mentioned anywhere, it is a good guess that the propulsion is based on the high-low system of some real-life grenade launchers. So, when cover must be raised, this is the tool you reach out for. And the best part? All these configs can be swapped in seconds by a trained user. 
as this system was designed for speed. But let's talk about the coolant magazines for a minute. Blastec deliberately routed the coolant magazines to the left side of the chassis and the choice brings some practical advantages. Exposed on the left side, the pack gives the operator an immediate visual read of remaining coolant, which is useful for timing reloads under fire. Placing the magazine laterally also shortens the weapon's overall profile, letting the undergun grip sit closer to the trigger and improving handling in confined spaces. The result is a compact, carbon-like silhouette. Now, with that out of the way, what is it based on? The DC-17M doesn't trace its shape to a single rear-walled gun. Instead, it borrows ideas, modularity, purpose and durability from several modern designs. Its interchangeable opera philosophy is similar to the FN SCAR family, which can be reconfigured for roles ranging from carbine to designated marksman rifle. The grenade launcher functions much like contemporary underbarrel grenade modules, like the M203, single-shot tube designed for dumb-fired warheads that detonate on impact. And when we're talking about the mags, the left-side layout goes towards older, unconventional feed systems. For example, the side-mounted magazine of the Sten gun, giving the weapon unique ergonomics and handling. Taken together, the DC-17 reads as a believable composite. A very complex design. But complexity brings compromise. The DC-17M's modular design introduces clear limitations. Compared with a standard DC-15, which can pour out hundreds of bolts before emptying, the 17M's coolant magazine only sustains roughly 60 shots or 5 for the sniper. And that's modest by Star Wars standards. The anti-armor launcher lacks a dedicated safety interlock, which is found on many real-world launchers. The common 40mm grenade uses a flywheel which allows the spinning hull of the grenade to generate a certain number of rotations before the impact fuse is lined up to detonate the grenade. The DC-17M launcher offers no such reassurance. Lastly, its modularity also demanded mastery. The 17M only reaches its full potential in hands trained to use every configuration. You will be superior to your more common brethren. If an operator is weak in even one mode, the weapon's main advantage is removed from the equation. That trade-off is one of the reasons why the DC-17M was never mass-issued to the rank and file. It required specialists. And the Republic knew this. Throughout the Clone Wars, the 17M was primarily wielded by the Republic commandos. Trained from birth on its use, the weapon became an extension of its operator, a tool designed for a specific type of soldier and a specific type of warfare. The now. After the Republic's fall, it remained in service for a time with the commandos who were still active. But, like the soldiers themselves, the weapon was eventually phased out. Beyond that, the DC-17M occasionally appeared in the hands of pirates, such as Hondo Naka's gang though never at its full potential. This is by far one of the most unique weapons from Star Wars. The definition of modularity. This was the DC-17M, the weapon of the Commando. Thank you for watching and until next time.